Romans chapter 9, in connection with Reverend Connor's speech for us this morning on Calvin's doctrine of predestination. Romans chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy, on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. That's how far this morning we read God's holy word. For our opening prayer this morning, I want to use parts of three Reformation prayers. One of them, a prayer of John Calvin, uh, sometimes called his morning prayer, but two of them, very briefly, from the history of Presbyterianism, because Reverend Connors is from the Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Australia. And you understand the history of Presbyterianism and the relationship between the Reformed in the continent and the Reformed in the British Isles. John Knox, the father of Presbyterianism, or one of the fathers of Presbyterianism, lived from 1514 to 1572, was a refugee in Geneva and came under the influence of Calvin. And as you know, called Geneva the most perfect school of Christ that ever was on the earth since the days of the apostles. John Knox 
one of the fathers of Presbyterianism, our brother's tradition, said that about Calvin's Geneva. Well, John Knox had a brief prayer that's recorded for us, and John Knox, with his influence on the Westminster Assembly, uh, the Westminster divines wrote a short prayer for the directory for worship. So Calvin's morning prayer, John Knox's own prayer for the church, and a brief prayer intended for the directory for worship in Presbyterianism. Let's open this morning's session with prayer. Our God, our Father, and our Savior, since it has pleased thee to preserve us by thy grace through the night just ended and until the present day, grant that we may use it entirely in thy service and that we may think, say, and do nothing but to please thee and to obey thy holy will so that all our actions may redound to the glory of thy name and the edification of our neighbors. And just as in this earthly life thou causest the sun to shine on the world to give physical light, let thy Holy Spirit illumine our minds to guide us in the way of thy righteousness. Thus in everything we do, let our goal and intention always be to walk reverently and to honor and serve thee relying only on thy blessing for our well-being and undertaking only what is pleasing to thee. Grant also, O Lord, that as we labor for our physical needs and for this present life, we may lift up our souls to that heavenly and blessed life which thou hast promised to thy children. And since to begin well means little unless one perseveres, we beseech thee to be our guide, not only today, but for all our life, daily continuing and increasing thy grace in us until thou hast brought us into full union with thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the true Son of our souls, shining day and night forever. O God of all power, who has called from death the great pastor of the sheep, our Lord Jesus, comfort and defend the flock which he hath redeemed by the blood of the eternal testament. Increase the number of true preachers. Mitigate and lighten the hearts of the ignorant. Relieve the pains of such as be afflicted, but especially of those that suffer for the testimony of the truth by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, who has so greatly loved us and mercifully redeemed us, give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works a continual thank offering unto thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With no announcements or reminders, as have been come, uh, become quite common in the conference, we will go straight to introduce our speaker this morning.